Well, well, well. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been asking for it for years, and it's finally here. My first ever liquid-cooled PC that I've put together myself. And let me tell you, the experience from start to finish has been a roller coaster of emotions. There's been excitement, there's been fear, and pretty much everything in between, really. I mean, that's only two emotions, but I assure you there were a lot more than that. And I wanted to put together this video to show you the entire process from start to finish. But there are definitely quite a few things we need to go over. If you are interested in putting together your own liquid cooled PC, there are definitely some things I would have liked to know before I started. So I wanted to sort of separate this video into a couple of minutes of going through everything that's inside it, how it works, what you need to know, and then the rest of the video is going to show you the entire process from start to finish that is going to give you more of an impression of what it's like to build as a first timer. And I think I have to start this thing by saying that a custom loop is mighty cool in every sense of the word. And it's essentially just a DIY cooling solution for the hottest components in your system. You'll need to gather water blocks for every item that you want to cool, with the most frequent being the GPU and CPU, but motherboard VRMs are also becoming more commonplace things and you will be able to cool them if you have an appropriate motherboard. You're creating a cooling loop to transfer the heat into radiators, which is then blown out of your chassis with the case fans. The more radiators, the more heat dispersion, and the quieter that your system can be. In order to get the water to move, however, you're going to need a pump, and to be able to fill the loop, you'll need a reservoir. But the two are commonly merged together to form a pump res, and this is what I used in my build. Now, connecting everything together is achieved with this, tubing. And depending on the look of the build that you want to go for, the difficulty, the aesthetics, you're going to need to decide if you want to go for soft or hardline. I've used soft in my build because it is easier to work with, but it doesn't really matter as long as you're buying the right fittings for the material you're using. The main advantage to a custom water loop is the cooling potential. With all of your components wrapped in a tight liquid system together, you're maximizing the amount of heat dispersion, with every fan and every radiator working more efficiently. This means that you can overclock your components even further, while having less fan noise, and all while having an insane looking PC. Corsair sent out all of the HydroX parts that I needed to create this loop, and you can find full links and current pricing for everything I've used down in the description below. Now I am about to show you the entire process from start to finish, but quickly to summarize and in case I've missed anything, here are the main things that I want to get across that are really important and that I think you need to know about water cooling. Firstly, creating a soft water cooled loop really isn't actually that hard. And while the risk of leaks is always possible, I needn't have been as scared as I was before it started. But you will likely need a hex socket screwdriver, however, something I didn't have, and a piece of equipment that's really not common. So research your graphics card teardown process before you start the work to know exactly what you need and avoid a last minute dash to the shops. You will also need to do a lot of planning. And like anything, you can expect some mistakes. Now I'll hold my hands up here and say that I've created a really ugly draining system and this is going to need to be rebuilt soon as there's just too much pipe around the back and yes, it is verging on kinking and being a disaster. I'll need to shorten the tubes and see if I can connect a draining system that doesn't put strain on the loop. Now custom cooling does have a lot of advantages when it comes to noise levels, but it is not completely silent. And the reason for this is because there is a very powerful pump in the system, as you've got more liquid that you need to move around and more stuff that is connected to this loop. So therefore, when you're gaming, yes, the whole system is going to be a lot, lot quieter than a standard graphics card and maybe a standard CPU cooler setup. But when you're sort of sitting in the desktop, you are going to hear that audible hum from the pump. So this is by no means a problem, but it is something to be aware of. And then finally, there's the cost. Make no mistake, this is an expensive bit of kit with value for money and custom water cooling, very hard to speak in the same sentence. If you've not already bought AIOs or powerful graphics cards, then yes, the pill is a bit easier to swallow, but make no mistake, there are better upgrades to your PC that you can make if you're just after sheer performance. But without further ado, here is the entire build process from start to finish. I hope you enjoy it. So classic timing, Windows has decided it needs to do an update, even though we are actually installing a new Intel Optane SSD in here. And this is a video I have been putting off for so long just because I think I am very nervous about it. If you think the first time you build a PC, that's pretty much how I'm feeling now, or maybe, I don't know, times three, times 10. It's quite hard to actually 
safe for sure. I probably should mention that Corso actually sent everything that they needed out in this Pelican case. Not quite sure why we needed such over the top uh, casing, but certainly not complaining. But if you think this is all you need to actually water cool a PC, you would be very much mistaken because I have radiators. We have a 360, a 240, lighting node pro, RGB definitely required. Six fans. This is gonna go on for a while. It is a little bit sad to be tearing down a system that I literally do just have to rebuild again. But I suppose I didn't have to change case, but if you're gonna be doing a Corsair build, it probably does make sense for it to be in a Corsair case, especially when Corsair send you all of the stuff. Yeah, I mean, that cable management isn't too bad, is it? That's all right. Yeah, see? I'm not completely incompetent, just, just slightly. Comment in the description if his hair's going flat. It is going flat. There is the much more easier solution taken care of. Now it's time to do it properly. 9900K Asus Maximus 11. That's right, I know my Roman numerals um, board. We are actually going to replace this RAM. We have some Corsair. What's this one called? This is the Dominator RGB, isn't it? Dominator Platinum. Um, so we're going to go to 32 gigs. And yes, it is pretty much quite a Corsair -y themed build, but as I say, they've sent everything out. So thank you, Corsair. Right, we now need to get some CPU cleaner. Let's take the RAM out and replace that while I think about it. To be fair, this bra this RAM, this RAM looks really good on a black motherboard. I'll give it that. I regret not doing it. It's all about theming everything properly. I mean, look, red does not go. Now look at that. That. This is a serious bit of kit. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that, actually. That looks good. Other screwdrivers upstairs. I need to put the SSD in it. Wait, I get the wait. cleaner. I got the cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> so really the main problem that I had with the old system other than cooling, which let's be honest, I didn't really have that much of a problem with, is the fact that I was using a SATA RGB SSD, but I mean, Realistically, I mean, RGB SSDs you do not need. I'd much rather have the performance. Made in China with partial foreign content, no less. I can't remember the model name. It's an Intel Optane. Intel sent this one out. 760p. So this is 500 gig, and it won't be enough storage for everything I need. But for a gaming PC, I'm pretty much only going to have about four or five uh, games on here. I think this will be enough for now, to be honest. So we pop that in there. Boom. Hooray, we're in. Cooking on gas. So I get some shots of the uh, the clock just ticking. Bit of kitchen paper. Get that CPU nice and clean. Use kitchen paper, not toilet roll, because otherwise you'll get lint on the CPU, and we wouldn't want that, now, would we? This is the exciting bit, the block. So this one is the XC7. There's two different ones. Um, depending on the socket you have, so if you have AM4 or if you have 1151 or whatever it is, um, you need XC7, or if you're using a larger Threadripper or X299, then you'd need the so XC8, XC9, the other larger block basically. Warranty guide. Has anyone ever looked at the warranty guide? That is the question. Let me know in the comments if you have. Like, I'm serious. Have you ever used a warranty guide? I've never looked at it. Honeycomb structure. Motherboard complete, it's now time for the scary bit really, the teardown of the RTX 2080 Ti. I need to remember where all of the screws go. I've only actually ever done this once before when the 20, no, the 1080 Ti Poseidon uh, broke on me and I had to take that apart and dry it out. So it's not, shouldn't, it shouldn't be too difficult to be honest, especially if it's a newer card as well, um, like this is, the screws shouldn't have sort of uh, changed with the heat and should be quite easy to remove. Let's have a look at the instruction manual. Just because in theory, it should tell me everything I need to unscrew, because I don't think I need to take literally everything out, but I know it's most stuff. It gives us a nice chance to look at the block as well. It's a very solid bit of metal. And I think the main difference with a Hydro X uh, GPU block than a lot of them is that all of these thermal pads are actually arranged ready to go So all you need to do is take apart the GPU put it on screw it together And then that's that you don't need to fiddle about with cutting it doesn't make it look like you need to take them on But I suppose you probably do then yeah, that's not even your card. So it's just showing every single yeah. All right, I'll take them out, I'll take them out. Well, You will not be, be able to even see them on camera. I reckon like look 
Look at that. Can you see? I'm going to drop that. No. Look at that. <laughs> Tiny little thing. Uh, there was a lot of screws. There's more screws in the bag as well. Here we go. This is the moment of truth. Yes, that looks more like it. Okay. Obviously, you will need to clean everything up. Uh, make sure it's all nice and neat and tidy uh, for those thermal pads that are going to go on there to keep all of the memory VRM stuff nice and cool. I'm not going to do the absolute tidiest job in the world. I'm just using a little bit of thermal compound remover and then wiping it off. It's mainly the GPU die, really, that you need to make sure is super, super clean. But here, I just want to get rid of most of it. You made a smell? No. <laughs> that wasn't me. It smells a bit farty. Cat would came in. Could have been. <laughs> just came in farted on that. Uh, so the way you're meant to install this is to get the card and then drop it straight onto the GPU block. There's a protective cover on here for the pre-applied thermal material and then you can see there are actually pads all the way on the block as well. So really, we don't need to do much. We should just drop this on and it should work. So let's have a go. So far so good. So I think the back plate needs to go on as well. Mm -hmm. There you go. And then that should all just screw down. Cool, let's do it. No, it's an attractive bit of kit really. Looking forward to seeing how this looks once the water's going through. I think one of the main things is that there actually is a flow indicator built into the GPU as well, and this will show up in IQ. So now that's all out of the way, it is time for the most exciting bit, which is actually the build. This is the Corsair 680X. So this is a larger version of, well, the mini ITX, micro ATX case, the 280X, that's right, my brain still works. And immediately I can see that one of the main problems that I had with the 280X seems to have been somewhat resolved, which is this air gap seems a lot bigger. Before I was having temperatures that were just a lot higher than I would have liked on the radiators because there wasn't enough of an air gap, but to my eyes that looks a lot, lot better now. Okay, so it is a little bit of a while later now. The lighting has probably completely changed. It's half past four or quarter to five. It really has been that long. And the reason is because the thing that's complicated about this is it's just about thinking everything through, making sure everything's in the right place. So we're at quite a crucial stage at the moment, which is where we're gonna be planning out our runs. Everything is built inside the 680X. We pretty much had two choices with the GPU. We could have vertically mounted it, or we could have had it in in a more traditional manner. I've gone for this because it means we are gonna get better airflow, because otherwise we would have to put the pump here, which would block this radiator and some of the air, but it's an option if you do want to see the block a little bit better. So the run that we're going to do is going to be with the tubing that's going to come around into the CPU. We've got an inlet on the left hand side and an outlet on the right. Then it's going to go to the radiator at the top, 240, down to the GPU. So everything's looking quite clean and tidy at the moment, but if we come around to the other side where we've put the pump, it's not quite the same story. I think the main problem that I have with this system so far is just how reliant it is on having all of these different cables. The lighting's probably terrible, but I'm sure you can actually see inside. Most of this isn't connected at the moment because we don't want any power to the motherboard in case we get any leaks. But because we have the Commander Pro, because we have RGB fans, we end up with just a lot in here. So this is the Commander Pro, and I will be able to manage it. There's not really any point doing it at the moment because we need to connect everything else that would be a little bit silly but it is definitely something to be aware of. So we're using super sharp scissors to make our cuts nice and clean. There may well be better ways of doing it but I'm pretty much giving myself a bit of slack lining up everything we need to do and then trying to make as clean a cut as possible. So I've already made a little bit of a mistake in that the inlet is actually on the right hand side of the CPU and the out is on the left which does make a lot more sense so I guess I'm quite glad in that respect. So I'm just refitting that. Uh, you need to get half of the fitting and then you push it up over the tube and then the rest obviously attached to the thing that you're plugging it into and then you just lay the pipe over the top. There's not really too much more than that. You just got to make sure the cut is clean and that the pipe is all, sort of all the way on the fitting. Otherwise you're going to run into problems. So that is on nice and tight. That can come down. And there we go. Nice and tight. Cool. 
going to have to polish all of these off after I've got them all covered in fingerprints. Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Actually, fitting the fittings and all of the tubing really didn't take anywhere near as long as I thought it was going to. It was more just planning it out, really. So it's now the bit I've been dreading the most, which is actually filling it up. We are using Corsair's clear fluid, as I don't want to have any maintenance in this. I say that, I'm probably going to take it apart in the next few months anyway and swap things out maybe for colour, but this is probably what I think most people want to start off with. It looks the most natural. We try to make everything look as clean as possible. You can either go for straight lines, and this is just a bit more naturally pleasing, I think, to the eye, or you can try and get a bit of curve in there, but I think this is probably the ugliest one, the one we have at the back, but there's not really that much I can do about it. You can alternate how it looks by having the tubing a little bit longer and then shortening it down as need be. But we've double checked everything's nice and tight. I mean, I have anyway, I think we both have. But I guess it's time to now fill it up. On the back of the power supply, you do have a jumper that comes provided with the kit that you put on. And this means that when you turn on the computer, it's not actually gonna turn on the computer, it's just the bits that we're wanting to run, which at the moment is just the, um, just the pump. I think the fans are probably plugged in, but it doesn't matter too much, to be honest. Very odd spending that amount of time actually making it look all pretty and then adding a bit of kitchen paper in, but you've got to do what you've got to do. I'm so paranoid. Don't worry about it, I'm sure it's fine. He says it, he's sure it's fine. <laughs> Don't worry, it's only a lot of expensive kit. It's fine, it's fine. No, why is it it's coming out the top? We've got a leak already. <laughs> Disaster. So change of plan. What you didn't actually see on camera was the end of this bottle actually went inside the pump. So we had to take it out and while we were there, we actually realized that filling it up like this is a lot easier. I'll do one up. I'm really nervous about this. Literally should just be flick on, flick off, I think. LEDs are on. Um, has it gone through? Some has, yeah. Nothing leaking? We're looking all right? I think we're all right. All right so far. Oh, that was so close. Almost completely spilled it everywhere. That would have been a disaster. Mm -hmm. I've got this feeling of excitement. Do you remember the first time, Gareth, that you built your first PC? I did. I've got that feeling back. I've not had that in a long, long time. It's just like big smile on my face. Oh, that's awesome. And you can tell as well, in terms of like air pressure as well within the loop, because the water is going a lot slower now down into the pump where we've got a tight air seal. So if I turn this on, I reckon we should be almost there. Better not speak too soon though. Oh, I'm so excited. Do you want one now? I want one. Do you yeah. want one of these? <laughs> Everyone should have a custom water called PC. Why did I not do this sooner? So here we are then. We have all of the PC built up. We've done our leak testing and thankfully, so far so good. We've just plugged in the motherboard and it's time for the moment of truth. Fans come on, RGB comes on. Pump should now come on at the back. Monitor. There we go, boom. We now have my very first water-cooled PC. Uh, I think I'm gonna take this, should we take the, the paper towel out and make it actually look a little bit better? Let's recognize the SSD. <laughs> take the paper towel out. Boom. Oh, that looks so good, that looks so good. I think definitely with this case, get it in black, because it looks miles, miles better. And the fans have gone off. And the thing immediately, as you can see, in terms of temperatures, I've set these fans to pretty much the minimum speed they will run, and we're sitting at around about 30 degrees, 35 degrees. It is doing some work at the moment, so it's up slightly at around about 35. But obviously, once we've 
given this thing a proper run through, we get some games on here, we'll be doing some proper tests. Let me know what you think of Hydro X in the comment section below. Would you now start your own liquid cooled system, something like this? I think it is a great way to get into it, but obviously the price of entry, while it's reasonable compared to the competition, it is still quite high. Make no mistake, this is very much enthusiast grade, is not something that everyone is going to need. Big shout out to Mr. Cameraman Gareth for driving all the way over here to actually help me out on this one, it's much appreciated. To Corsair for sending out all the stuff, making this possible. For you guys for watching, I'll see you in the next one.